There's a sketch comedy series on Netflix called I Think You Should Leave, starring Tim Robinson. It has, let's just say, a very specific kind of humor. That means you won't be able to see some of your favorite corn cob TV shows, including Coffin Flop. If you hate this kind of humor, you'll probably find it annoying as heck. But if this extremely weird situational humor is your thing, well, I think I know what you're going to be watching all week. Mr. Andrews asked him how much it cost, and he said, it's illegal for you to ask me that. Now, despite the absolute insanity that goes down in the show, one of the things that makes I Think You Should Leave stand out is the fact that no matter how bizarre these sketches get, they do often come with some sort of emotional backbone, even if that emotional backbone is as mundane as, well, not skipping lunch. You can't skip lunch. In the first episode of season two, there's a sketch that I would argue is one of the show's best. The setup is basically that there's a haunted house tour where, well, this happens. It's just after 10 p.m. This is the adult tour, which means you can drink if you want, and we can say whatever the hell we want. <laughs> Jizz. Sorry? Jizz. Like, shot. You can say that because you say we can say whatever the hell we want. I'm sure. Or horse. Yeah, I guess. You know, there are no rules about swearing. Awesome. So this continues on for some time. Any of these little fuckers ever pop out of the fucking wall and say, there's a horse in my room or a donkey? Not to my knowledge. Got it. The tour guide brings him aside. Look, I'm glad you're having fun. It's interesting, the ghosts. But you're ruining the tour. Then later, this. Not trying to be funny. Not trying to get a laugh. I don't want anybody to have the worst day at their job. But do any of these ever blast out of the wall and have like a huge shot? No, they don't. OK. Now, it would seem that this should be enough to cement this skit as something unique and memorable. This guy appeared to be abusing the swear privilege just because he can, only for us to later realize that he was serious the whole time. But then, the sketch goes one step further when it ends here. Hi, Mom. Make any friends? Not really. Suddenly, this one moment manages to recontextualize everything we saw before. In this one small moment, Tim Robinson is able to paint a clear picture of this guy's life, making him a sympathetic, even tragic figure while not taking away from the humor. The super Christian car and the fact that he's an adult living with his mother shows us that he's been sheltered and suppressed his whole life. He entered this haunted house, and when he learned that they were allowed to swear, he saw this as an outlet to finally release some of his suppressed emotions. This is why when the tour guide chews him out for it, it's so emotional for him. He wasn't just swearing to abuse the rule, but because he could finally let out this part of himself that he felt he never could at home. And it's this idea that I absolutely love. I love how a story can set up a character in a specific way, but then through what we see later on, those characterizations get recontextualized, making us see those same actions in a completely different light. It doesn't change the character, but it changes how we see the character. And it's this reason, among many others, why I loved the short-lived Cartoon Network series, Mau Mau, Heroes of Pure Heart. So, okay, I've already expressed how I love animation, and I have a bit of a soft spot for fun, mindless cartoons like this. When I started watching this with a friend, I just thought it'd be a fun little cartoon to pass the time. Yet, what I got was something far more fascinating. So, Mau Mau, Heroes of Pure Heart follows the title character, Mau Mau, an egotistical, self-centered narcissist who is obsessed with becoming the world's greatest hero, who, in a series of circumstances, accidentally gets put in charge of looking after a town of simple-minded cartoon folk. I describe the show as, imagine if Kratos had to look after a bunch of Care Bears. You're very popular! Of course they love us! We're constantly saving their worthless butts! The show follows him, his best friend Badger Clops, and his apprentice, Adorabat. So, 
yeah, at first this seems like a pretty standard cartoon affair. So, first of all, one of the things I noticed about Mau Mau as I began watching it was just how different it was from other cartoons in often subtle ways. The show at times seemed to be a satire or deconstruction of children's cartoons. Mau Mau is far from the typical kids show protagonist. He's a narcissist who doesn't really care about others' feelings and, to be honest, doesn't change terribly much throughout the series. He's a fun character to watch and Parker Simmons voiced the heck out of him, garnering him a well-deserved Emmy. Badger Cops used to practice this when we were on the road. What was that song called again? Uh, I never participated, I just ridiculed it mercilessly. What's that song, Badger Clops? But by way only of observation, I mastered the choreography. Badger Clops! But he's definitely not someone I'd be friends with in real life, and far from a typical kids show protagonist. The first episode, which mostly exists to set up the premise of the series, doesn't hold back on making fun of kids shows. So, like, most kids shows feature characters who, in the world of the show, are technically adults. But because the show is designed for kids, they can't act like complete adults. So, these shows have adult characters acting like exaggerated, childlike adults. And we often don't think of how strange that is, but Mau Mau calls this out in the very first episode. Pretty sure you're just a kid? In fact, aren't you all children? I'm 30! Pure Art Valley, the town Mau Mau accidentally gets put in charge of, can be seen as a sort of representation of typical kids show settings. Everyone inside has this adult child mindset you'd expect from a kid show, and the town is literally protected from outside threats by a giant force field, essentially creating an ideal utopia for these characters to thrive in. Notice how the few characters we meet from outside the town, Mau Mau, Badger Clops, Tanya, all act way more like real world adults. Oh, I heard Pure Heart Valley was back on the scene and I thought, mm, I'll come and check it out. Save for the Sky Pirates, who I would say are probably the weakest part of the show. Compare that to Inside Pure Heart Valley, where everyone is... I'm flirty! And so the show often makes fun of the prospect of kid shows. Lessons that would fill up entire episodes are solved in mere seconds by Mau Mau, frustrated at how simple it is. All right, all right. Now what happened? So I had told him that that was mine! And what I said was that I wanted it! <sighs> Why don't you just give him back the thing, and then you can both share it? One of my favorite episodes that parries kids shows has to be episode 9, Out Fox. In the episode, Mau Mau learns that there is a fox and a raccoon that strolled into Pure Heart Valley and is conning everyone. Now, this is what I would call a typical con artist episode, not every cartoon has them, but they're there. One or a couple of businessmen will stroll in town, perhaps driving one of the characters out of business, until by the end of the episode, where they're revealed to be frauds and they're run out of town. So I would describe out Fox as Mau Mau's con artist episode. But whereas other shows will hide the true intentions of the con artist until the very end, in Mau Mau... Say, how does this work again? Put your stuff inside our sack and watch your gladness grow! And what's hilarious is that everyone just completely falls for it. Yeah, yeah, take my money. Take my social security number. Take my hand. In marriage. You may have everyone else fooled, but I know a bad guy when I smell one. You'll slip, and when you do, I'll be there. And as if that wasn't enough, sometimes in these con artist episodes, the con artists will be introduced in a song to represent how charismatic they are. That happens here, too. Give us all your games and phones, all the valuables from your homes. Don't be stingy! It's Thanksgiving Day! But the thing is, Mau Mau isn't a musical. This is literally the only musical number in the entire series. So this episode instead becomes about Mau Mau trying to prove that these guys are frauds, and it's just a perfect send-up of the basic con artist episode formula. No, but your voice! How did you change? I just practiced. Mau Mau doesn't always lean into this satirical parody, and sometimes it may even seem that Mau Mau becomes the show is trying to make fun of, but Mau Mau is also willing to do things that other cartoons wouldn't even think of. So for the first six episodes, Mau Mau is a pretty fun character. He's a narcissist and extremely full of himself, and that's about it. Enough for a fun character. That all changes in episode seven, not impressed. Quite possibly one of the best episodes of Saturday morning cartoon television, maybe ever? So the setup is pretty simple. Mau Mau and company are having a pretty typical evening. So what are we doing 
Gemini battling the Impressor. Pay attention. Okay. Then they defeat the Impressor and. Now, now, settle down. A hero doesn't need gratitude. We only. Well, are those essential words? Uh, no! Uh, we don't accept gifts. Although we are helpless to accept your applause! <laughs> what? What's his problem? Can he tell a legendary hero when he sees one? The audacity. I'm not gonna let the opinion of one person tear down my superior self esteem. No one can. Dude, you're literally watching someone inside a bush. Stalking someone all night is mutually exclusive to not caring about their opinion. Okay, fine, it bothers me. And so the rest of the episode is about Mau Mau desperately trying to impress this guy. Uh, but look at how many friends I have! Three whole friends! Uh, one of them is you. You better believe I love me like a friend. And this alone makes for a pretty good cartoon episode. It's a fun concept that fits the lead character and teaches this lesson of how not everyone will like you and you can't impress everyone. And the episode could have totally ended here and it would have been remembered as a fun episode but nothing more. But no, because then Mau Mau goes above and beyond and adds another layer to the story that I honestly don't think any other development team would dare to do. So when Mau Mau first sees Blue, this happens. I don't know, I'm just not that impressed by you. Not impressed? Ta-da! What is this feeling? Oh no, this is dredging up some old memories. Sorry, I'm just not impressed. Not impressed? Watch me! I am impressive! Watch me! Watch me! Watch me! Watch me! Watch me! No, I am a great warrior! So we learn in this episode that as a child, Mau Mau's father was so concerned with training his older sisters to become great warriors and heroes, and he basically never paid too much attention to Mau Mau. So in this episode, Mau Mau is projecting his father onto Blue. Must impress my dad, uh, citizen! This episode even ends with Mau Mau beginning therapy and beginning to come to terms with his father's treatment. And this, this is the moment that permanently changes how we see Mau Mau. Because while the show is obviously not explicit about this, Mau Mau is basically the victim of child abuse. I honestly find this so fascinating, because in most kids' shows, since they're aimed at little kids, parents are often portrayed as being great and ideal. If they do have any problems, it's usually that they love their kids too much. But Mau Mau is the first kids' cartoon I've seen that is willing to have was essentially an openly abusive parent. Mau Mau is the victim of child neglect. This becomes a bit of a running joke throughout the series, but it only further cements how Mau Mau faced a form of abuse as a child. Once we take down these sky pirates, our reputation will soar, and I'll be that much closer to the legend I'm destined to become. <laughs> Dude, are you having that fantasy where your family loves and respects you, and you're also super buff? Told you that in confidence! It's cute, who cares? I mean, there's a whole flashback episode where Mau Mau's family literally ditches him so they can go on a fun family vacation without him. While the show often uses Mau Mau's abuse as a joke, they still often come with a bit of nuance. So, my favorite joke about Mau Mau's past comes in this episode, where Badger Clops learns that Mau Mau's last name is Mao. Wait, 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 wait. Your dad's last name is Mao, so that means your first name is just Mao? No, my first name is Mau Mau. Dude, is your name Mau Mau Mau? I don't want to talk about it, okay? Like, it's hilarious, but think about it. Mau Mau's father cared about him so little that he didn't even bother to give him a proper name. But it goes deeper than that. Because think back to Mau Mau's personality in the series. He's an egotistical, self-centered narcissist, obsessed with becoming the world's greatest hero. Suddenly, this is no longer a fun, quirky personality, and that's it. This is a result of the abuse that he faced as a child. He never got the love and attention from his father that most children do, so now he's obsessed with being liked by everyone. Mau Mau's father literally neglected him in favor of teaching his older sisters to become great heroes. Well, that should be it for all the cool weapons. But where is mine? Oh, uh, Momo, I didn't realize you were still here. Uh, let's see. Oh, here! Yay! <laughs> so the whole thing about Mau Mau wanting to become a great hero is no longer a character quirk, but instead because in Mau Mau's eyes, if he can become a great hero, he'll finally get the attention from his father that he never got as a child. And then we handcuffed you and you took me to jail and I became a true hero and my sisters loved me and my dad finally! Stop! That hasn't happened yet! Oh, just got ahead of myself. But he's also self-centered, afraid of getting too close to people out of fear of abandonment. This is seen with Bao Bao, Mau Mau's former dog who ran away, so Mau Mau never forgave him for that. 
And so now, Mao Mao becomes an implicit commentary on abuse. Again, of course, the show is never truly explicit about this, but the subtext is still there. Basically, Mao Mao shows how abuse can alter someone's personality, especially if they face that abuse as a child. And Mao Mao is no longer with his father, so it shows how abuse can still greatly affect a person even long after they've left the abuser. What's more is that Mao Mao even begins to explore this. In the episode Small, Mao Mao's father literally comes over and visits, and in the episode, Mao Mao and his father begin to come to terms with Mao Mao's past, also showing how sometimes abusers don't even realize that their actions are abusive. But even after this episode, Mao Mao's personality doesn't change, and his reflection of his past still continues in the many episodes past this. And look, I know that cartoons like this produce episodes randomly and there isn't really an order you're supposed to watch them in, but if we just take a moment to analyze this, we find that this too is a commentary on abuse. Even if you're able to make peace with your abuser and they see the error of their ways, the effects of abuse still linger. And I just love this idea that Mao Mao is able to establish a character and then in one simple 10 minute episode, completely recontextualize and redefine the character, adding a whole new deeper subtext and meaning to the series as a whole. And sure, maybe I'm reading into it too much, but these values are still there. And what's even cooler is the fact that this doesn't just apply to the character of Mao Mao. Adorabat, too, is recontextualized later in the series. So in the beginning, Adorabat is a character who is basically a cute little girl who wants to go out there and slay monsters, and that's her whole personality quirk. But then in the episode Adoradad, we see her in a new light. Her dad comes to visit, having not seen her in months. And at first, it just hilariously fills in a plot hole that most people would overlook because cartoon. But in the episode, we learn that prior to the events of the series, Adorabat's mother was killed by a monster. So in the past several months, Adorabat's dad has neglected her just like Mao Mao's, but this time that neglect is due to grief over his wife. Hey, uh, I know things have been a little off at home since. Yeah. But I uh, think you'll find that your old man can be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 well, you know, I mean, obviously you can't have fun all the time. I mean, sometimes dads cry Adorabat! And suddenly this too recontextualizes Adorabat. She no longer is just trying to kill monsters because it's a fun character quirk. She wants to be Mao Mao's apprentice because she sees just how much death of her mother has hurt her father, and her becoming a hero like Mao Mao gives her a chance to kill monsters, perhaps preventing this tragedy from happening to anyone else. And this is a kid's show. So, Mao Mao Heroes of Pure Heart was originally renewed for a second season, but shortly after, Cartoon Network took down any mention of Mao Mao from their social media, and the show was taken off of HBO Max. While the YouTube videos have since been restored, there's been no mention of a second season since the 2020 Comic Con shortly after the first season ended. So, it's been almost three years since the last episode of Mao Mao, so while the show hasn't officially been cancelled, it doesn't look like the show will be coming back anytime soon. Which is unfortunate, since Mao Mao was able to find ways to discuss themes that I never thought would be discussed in a kid's show, in a way that is subtle enough to get past the censors, but still have it be there. This idea that Mao Mao is able to establish a character, then recontextualize that character later on, is just so cool. I love it when stories are able to do this. Establish someone as one way, then as we learn more about them, suddenly traits that we thought were funny or quirky or annoying become understandable, and we find ourselves sympathizing with characters that we never thought we'd sympathize with. And, and now we're best friends! Uh, actually, Mau Mau is my best friend! Mau Mau! He's mine! Look, I've known Mau Mau way longer than you! So basically, hashtag free Mau Mau. <laughs>